Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Animalia part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the next phylum that is Nematoda. So what are we going to talk about in Nematoda? So these are also worm-like creatures. So let us see what are they. They are also termed as Ascalminthus. They are known as Ascalminthus. I mean, it is in rhyming with the Platyhelminths. What is Platyhelminths? These are Ascalhelminths. Now, you might be wondering why are they called Ascalhelminths? Okay, we will talk, we will see that. Once we study about their structure, then we can talk about that as well. So, looking at the name Nematodes, the term nemato means thread. So these are worms which have thread-like structures. So they are very thin worms. So let us look at some of the important characteristics of nematodes. Now even for nematodes, large number of species exist. Almost around 15,000 species exist. They have complex body differentiation. So now that we have come quite far, the body differentiation is going to be complex. Body is bilaterally symmetrical. So here also the same thing. If you divide it, you will be able to get two equivalent right and left halves. Body made up of three layers of cells that is triploblastic. So here after for most of the... Uh, phylum you will see that they are all coelomates I and mean, not coelomates they are all triploblastic and they are all symmetrical so these are triploblastic that is they have all the three ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm so they have all the three so it will be so if you look at a cross section of any of these you will be able to see an ectoderm then you will have inside endoderm so this will be your ectoderm which is the external one and you will have an endoderm the internal one and in between you will have the mesoderm that is this one I mean, this portion is mesoderm Talking about coelom, these are pseudocoelomate. You remember what was pseudocoelomate? Those with a false coelom. So even though the true coelom is not present, but there is some coelom-like structure present here. So where is that coelom-like structure present? So if you see that coelom-like structure is present somewhere here, you will have some coelom-like structure present here. So, which is not a true coelom, but it resembles somewhat like a cavity. So, that is why it is called pseudocoelomate. So, this is again something new. Before this, everything were acoelomate, whether it was platyhelminths or cylindrata or polyphera, everything was acoelomate. So, this is the first time that someone has a false coelom. Level of organization is organ system level of organization because here you are going to have distinct organ systems. You are going to have distinct digestive, respiratory, excretory systems. They are cylindrical and unsegmented. So there is no segmentation seen on these kind of worms. I'm sure you would have seen these kind of worms in your day-to-day -day life. You would have seen some worms, a, a thin thread-like structure, plain, no segmentation on their bodies. So they are commonly seen also. So they are unsegmented. They are parasitic in nature. Therefore, they are also termed as parasitic worms because they live on another host body and derive its nutrition from their body. So now here, as I said, pseudocoelom is a distinction for nematodes because this is the first time it is seen. Now this pseudocoelom is not lined with a layer of tissue. Therefore, it is not very distinct. Whereas in coelomates, you will see that the coelom is very neatly, will have a complete lining, which is known as peritoneum. I discussed that before, right? Okay. So these are the basic characteristics of nematodes. They have circular cross section. That is why they are also known as round worms. So if you look at the cross section, at any point, they have circular cross section. 
so they are round bones like how in case of platy helminths because they are dorso ventrally flattened that is from back to front they are flattened what do we mean by dorsi ventrally back to front let us suppose if this is the back of an animal and this is the front so if you keep on flattening it so what happens it becomes flat so that is how the platy helminths are so they are called flat worms nematodes they have round cross section so they are called round worms now talking about their being parasitic or not most mostly they are free living now when i talk about parasitic worms an example of parasitic nematodes would be the guinea worm it is parasitic on human beings again the filarial worm which causes the disease filariasis so that filarial worm is also parasitic on human beings they stay inside the human body receives its nutrition and at the same time it causes diseases to the human body so guinea worms filarial worm these are some examples of parasitic worms okay they are mobile that is they can move from one place to another now what contributes to their mobility why so what makes them mobile just now i told that they have a pseudo coelom that is the false coelom now this false coelom allows the body wall muscles and the digestive tract muscles to act independently so so this false cavity where is this false cavity it is between the body wall and the gut wall so this cavity actually allows the body wall muscles and the gut wall muscles to act independently and due to this movement of the muscles the organs are mobile right also the body wall has an elastic cuticle so the presence of elastic cuticle over the body you have a layer of elastic cuticle so how does it help the layer of muscle fibers which are present under the epidermis that means under this layer the outer layer is present a layer of muscle fibers so body is covered with cuticle which may have spines which can ensure protection so this cuticle will ensure protection and this elasticity will also help in its movement so there are muscle fibers present below the hypodermis so these all together helps in the mobility of the nematodes let us look at some examples of nematodes ascaris and vucheraria are some examples of nematodes so you can see there is no segmentation on their body but some dot like structures you can see right so what are they they are nothing but the spine like structures which i was talking about just now so they are covered with the spine like structures okay let us now talk about the organ systems of the nematodes that means as i said they have got the dis different systems distinctly so let us see how and what are the different systems that are present in the nematodes so first we will talk about the digestive system so here in digestive systems again for the first time we have two openings that is mouth and anus so they have a complete digestive system till now first porifera cilentrata no digestive system next in uh, platy helminths it was there but there was just one opening but here you have two openings one is for ingestion that is mouth the other one is for ejection that is anus so mouth is for ingestion and anus is for ejection so this is how the structure of a nematode looks like so you have mouth here and you have anus here towards the end the digestive tract is complete with a well developed muscular pharynx so what is the role of the pharynx muscular pharynx because it helps in the movement of the food inside the body because the food is entered or intake of food happens through mouth then it goes to pharynx now if the pharynx is muscular that movement of the pharynx will actually help the food to go inside the body 
right now here since you have two openings there is one more advantage that the food which is to be taken in that is the incoming food and the outgoing food that is the undigested food they do not get mixed up with each other so one comes through mouth the other goes out through anus so there is no mixing between the incoming and the outgoing food so here we have a mouth we have intestine we also have anus so we have the different parts the digestive system is complete it is simple as well i mean not a very complex digestive system a simple complete digestive system talking about the excretory system so how excretion happens in case of uh, nematodes so for that they have specialized excretory spores present so where are the excretory pores they are present somewhere here so here they have the excretory pores so through this excretory pores all the waste materials of the body are thrown out and also the cilia or flagella which are present in them also helps in this process of excretion because they helps in movement of the food movement of the waste products outside so excretory pores actually help in excretion next is the nervous system so let us see how the nervous system looks like so here also they have a better developed nervous system so here they have a nerve ring which is made of four ganglia which serves as brain so ganglia is nothing but a simple form of brain which is present at the anterior end so again cephalization is there so cephalization started from platyhelminthes helminthes and it will be present in all other higher animals so here also cephalization was present and therefore the brain and the sensory organs were towards the anterior end so where is the nerve ring here so this structure which you see here is the nerve ring here this red colored structures which you see it is nothing but the esophagus that is the food pipe through this the food enters this is the mouth so the food intake happens here and then the food enters through the esophagus when talking about the nervous system this is the nerve ring and here you have a nerve cord there are two nerve cords running on the dorsal and the ventral end so this is the back end and this is the front end so here you have a dorsal nerve cord running throughout the length of the body and this side you have a ventral nerve cord running through the length of the body now from the ring arises nerves which run the length of the body on dorsal ventral and lateral surfaces so there are three types of nerve cords which run here dorsal nerve cord lateral nerve cord and ventral nerve cord so lateral nerve cord we cannot see it from here it is on the lateral sides so back side is dorsal front side is ventral and on the sides are the lateral they have got specific functions like the dorsal nerve cord this nerve cord helps in the motor control lateral nerve cords helps in sensory control and ventral nerve cord helps in both of them so different types of nerve cord have specialized functions for each of them so that is why it is said that the nervous system here is more specialized and more developed specialized sensory organs or receptors are also present what are those organs here because here we do not see something as eye or something so what are they sensory bristles covering the body provide sense of touch so throughout their body you have some bristles like structure small structures they act as uh, our skin so they are sensitive to touch two small amphids on head they are chemoreceptor organs so here you have two small amphids so which act which are uh, sensitive to chemicals so these are some of the specialized sensory organs present in nematodes so one of the best example of nematodes which we took was ascaris and it these are nothing but the small round worms which are generally found in human intestines also now that is why they are also known as small intestinal round worms some of them also have pigmented eye spots so eye spots amphids and bristles these are the different cells so let us talk about the reproduction in nematodes so how do they reproduce now for sexual reproduction their sexes are separate that is there is a separate male and a separate female and it happens by the fusion of male and female gametes 
Fertilization is internal, that is the fusion happens inside the body of the organism. Now, the males and females are distinct and it is also seen that the females are generally longer than the males. So if you look at the size, here in this picture, if you see, this is the male and this is the female. So the size of the female is longer than that of the males. Now, as a result of fertilization, the fertilized eggs which are formed, they have a thick wall and that thick wall protects them and therefore they can survive in adverse conditions. Talking about the development, it can be direct or indirect, direct in the sense there is no larval stage involved and indirect where a larval stage is involved. So in some it is direct development while in others it is indirect. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.